Yeah, yeah this, this track that's playing now is actually uh, um, a remix of a friend's piece for Vox That Matters made with Vox Drawn instruments. If you like music trivia. Yeah, so this is me. Uh, send me an email afterwards if you want more information about anything I talk about. I won't talk about much. I, I think this time I'll just um, give you a brief summary of what I'm working on and just make one point about history of design and why it's important to develop a history and culture uh, for any particular project. Oh, maybe I'll snap my fingers for the next slide or something. <laughs> yeah, so this is, um, this is the sign outside people or you can find it near the south exit of Kishiroji Station. Um, yeah, you can find a link from the Next Lawful Games website somewhere, I think. Uh, these are some games that I've worked on in the past. I used to be really interested in abstract puzzle games, and I'm interested in small games that um, kind of focus on one design point. So, uh, actually that's not true of Jasper's Journeys. In the top left there was like a nostalgic game that I made with my brother, but the other games, for example, Chocolate Castle was interested in object recombination and emergent puzzle design. Saw Mesa was uh, about emergent control schemes, and in Puzzle Garden in the bottom right is about theme and rules resonating in, in some way. And this is, so that, that was sort of like the first epoch of games which financially ruined me, then I spent like two or three years recovering from that, and I started making these new prototypes, just seeing what I could uh, make a living from. And so this is an ecological action game, and this is a remake of Swarm Mesa, called Swarm Mesa 3000. These games haven't been released because um, the game that I got the most response for uh, by far was Fox Run, which should be the next one. Yeah, so, so for a long time I wanted to make a, a voxel-based game, uh, not, not just using voxels as some material in the world combined with other uh, representation, but actually a game built for a virtual volumetric display uh, where the video memory is a linear 8-bit memory, but it's encoding voxels instead of pixels. So if you turn one byte on, then you get a cube. So this is a visualization of what a volumetric display looks like if you're using it in the real world, but to confuse matters, I've drawn this in the volumetric display. <laughs> so imagine these four characters are real people in the real world. You can sit around a table and you can, you can view uh, the, the display from any angle. Uh, it's just basically a block of, of cubes. Uh, so it's sort of like a, a, a hologram. Yeah, so this is this is what Voxtron looked like in 2004, when it wasn't Voxtron. It was my first attempt at making a real-time voxel renderer. Um, at that time, I could get it running at um, a resolution of 64 by 64 by 32. And although it was visually interesting to me, it wasn't enough to construct any kind of interesting or detailed action around. And I didn't really want to make uh, just a, a visually driven adventure game. Uh, and also I knew that it would take too long to make. I would run out of money before I finished it. So I worked on a bunch of other stuff. Uh, uh, and then I, I eventually came back to Voxtron in 2010. And so this, this, uh, the resolution of this virtual display is 128 by 128 by 64. And um, because it's a new display format, I, so I mentioned earlier that I'm interested in doing really sort of focused games, which have a strong identity and sort of focus on one idea. But Voxtron completely ruined that for me because uh, when you have a new display in a new format, suddenly you want to make every genre in that format. <laughs> so you know, I want to make like Voxtron Dungeons, and I want to make like my Voxtron tennis game, and you know, just anything. Uh, so I, I, I expanded the the identity of Voxtron as being uh, more of a, a platform than just just a game. So, yeah, there's really, I, I'm sort of uh, trying to keep uh, a focus on certain aspects of the games so that I can have an identity that I can talk about and explain what the game is. Um, so there is going to be a traditional adventure game that's actually the main character with the girl with pink hair. Uh, the, the story is about this girl who falls to earth carrying a mysterious egg and she doesn't know what to do with it. Then there's the um, the battle kind of Robotron mode that everyone's probably more familiar with. That was just a, a um, 
kind of starting point which gave the game its name. And the third part, which is actually the part I'm most excited about, is just using it as a general platform for making, so that users can make levels, but also I can indulge all of my retro voxel uh, genre fantasies. Um, so this is a screenshot of a recent development build, which just it shows a few things like um, uh, liquid and these monsters are user-made monsters using a modular system where you can define animations and uh, make logical expressions that determine when the state changes and things like this. Um, and yeah, this is this is the editor. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of aiming to be a lo-fi version of Unity for voxel space. The, oh, sorry, go back one. This is um, yeah, this scene is from a level that one of one of my users is, is making. Uh, if, if you have a copy of Voxtron, you can check it out. It's called uh, Journey to the East. Okay. And uh, yeah, I also love that people are starting to use Voxtron just as a general design and modeling tool. So this guy used uh, Voxtron just to make, um, start making building out worlds and rendering them in other software. And he's totally not interested in games or playing the Um This is a render by a graphics programmer from NVIDIA, Simon Green, who's interested in real-time ray tracing and uh, nice ambient lighting. And um, Voxtron's simple display format allows some visual possibilities that wouldn't normally be very feasible on common hardware. Um, yeah, so, so I hope that gives you like a really fast, rough picture of, of what I'm trying to do with the, the project. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to, to show you is, um, oh, if you go back one frame, um, so, uh, yeah, actually I didn't talk much about history, more um, how uh, the, the format of a device or the, the display format of a, that a game set in really influences the design decisions you make and the possibilities for gameplay. Uh, so I have this TV in, in the cafe and it's really low resolution and really fuzzy and it can only play games which are extremely simple. And I kind of like the challenge of designing games that can run on a display of this format. So it sort of has some parallels with um, Foxtron in that sense. You can't really show too much detail. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm developing a virtual console called Google 8, uh, if you show the next thing. So it's 128 by, sorry, 120 by, uh, uh, 160 by 120, and there's only 16 colors. Um, and it's entirely assembled from components from Foxtron. So the sound synthesizer, the um, music synthesizer, the um, all of the community sharing tools and the scripting and stuff like that are all sort of reduced from Voxtron into a micro two-dimensional version of Voxtron. And the idea is just to create another platform that people can indulge their, you know, rainy Sunday afternoon game designing fantasies without feeling bad that they're going to throw the project away the next day. And that's all I've got for you now. Thanks very much.